More than 25 million adults in the United States suffer from a fear of flying, and while those fears may be rational, airplane-related accidents are incredibly rare, and air travel is the safest method of transportation. But sometimes things can go wrong and mistakes can be made. So let's begin today's video on the top 15 most dangerous plane takeoffs and landings. Number 15. Courchevel International Airport France is known for good food, great wine, and of course, gorgeous locations. But it's easy to forget about the incredibly high snow-covered peaks. And if you're looking for an adventure in skiing, then look no further than the Courchevel International Airport in France. The runway is pretty short, with just 1,700 feet in runway length, but to make it that far, the airplane is still going to have to make a pretty steep climb if the pilots can even make it through the deep valleys. This is an airport with such a dangerous landing that only specially certified pilots are allowed to even attempt a landing here. And there are no second chances at Courchevel International, so you either get it right the first time or not at all. It also runs on a pretty serious slope with a steep gradient of 18.5%, so you better hold on to your lunch if you plan on making a stop here. And to make matters even worse for some strange reason, the airport doesn't offer any lights or instrument aid. So good luck if you're trying to make it here during some bad weather because it is not going to happen. Number 14. Saba Airport the island of Saba in the Dutch Caribbean is the original inspiration for the old King Kong movie, so having an airport there has to be just as scary as the creature itself. The Saba airport has one of the shortest runways in the world, coming in at only 1,300 feet long. Only well-trained pilots are allowed to fly in the area, so if you've just started, it may be best to sit this one out. The terrain of Saba is also pretty jagged and perilous, and so the Saba airport is no exception. To hit the runway perfectly, pilots are going to have to make an incredibly sharp bank left and then immediately go in for the landing. And when you have an airport this perilous, there are bound to be plenty of rules and regulations to be followed. Jet aircraft are unable to land at the Saba airport because the runway is just too short for that, but smaller short takeoff and landing planes are common sights here. A small little ramp and terminal are on the southwest flank of the runway, and the ramp also has a designated helipad. And while there is the main tower, it's only used to provide an advisory service and doesn't provide any air traffic control. And if you need to refuel here, good luck, because there's absolutely zero aviation fuel available on the island of Saba. Number 13. Madeira Airport This landing strip of the Madeira Airport is located between some pretty steep cliffs and the ocean. Whatever the hell engineers were thinking when they built this one is anyone's guess. But they also built a series of platforms on artificial islands to extend the runway. It was so short. The runway itself is held up by more than 180 sturdy columns, which are specially designed to withstand the shock during a landing. Here's another airport where only a select few pilots are allowed to land their aircraft. Actually, you can become qualified after completing hours of advanced training in a simulator, but it's still a whole other ballgame when you're doing the real thing. The airport itself is pretty tough to spot, so these pilots need to be able to locate specific landmarks while they approach the strip, and the fact that there's no instrument landing here isn't helping anyone out. Couple that with the area's strong winds and, again, the location between the mountains and the ocean, and you've got a recipe for disaster if you're not careful. Number 12. Princess Juliana International Airport On the island of St. Martin is the Maho Public Beach. It offers white sandy beaches, gorgeous crystal clear water, and some serious Instagram shots. But it's also located right at the end of the runway of the Princess Juliana Airport, so don't be alarmed if you're swooped up by a massive gust of wind caused by the plane coming in for a landing. Oh yeah, and not to mention the deafening sound it brings with it when you wake up in the middle of your sun-filled nap. This airport boasts a long runway, coming in at 7,100 feet, but the planes have to reach an extremely low altitude in order to hit it just right. So if you see any photos of the beach or even manage to hang out on the shore, it looks like the airplane is just a few feet above the beachgoers' heads. It's a tough spot for pilots, too, because that means they're going to have to not only block out the hundreds of daily sunbathers in an attempt to stay focused on the oddly placed runway and miss the beach entirely despite being so close to the ground. There are plenty of signs warning beachgoers and spectators of the dangers of getting too close to jet engines, but despite those dangers, Maho Beach is one of the most popular places in the world for plane spotters. Sadly, though, in 2017, a woman from New Zealand died after getting too close and sustained injuries from the jet blasts from a departing aircraft. Number 11. Lufthansa at Hamburg Airport 
In 2008, both the 137 passengers and the crew aboard this Lufthansa jet had to hold tight during a wild ride caused by some pretty nasty crosswinds. The airplane was making its final approach at Hamburg Airport in Germany, but a winter storm had some other plans for them. It's a pretty scary sight, so just imagine what it must have been like to be on the inside of the cabin as the plane wobbled about, drifting that way and this way like a leaf on the wind. A really strong wind. But for every time the wind caused a plane to veer off its trajectory, there's an amazing recovery made by the pilots. Even the landing was compromised as the plane attempted to safely touch down on the runway more than once, only to be forced to abort the landing and take off to the skies again to stabilize themselves out. Luckily, though, it was later reported that the flight was able to land safely later on, and all 137 people were able to walk away to live and fly another day. Number 10. McMurdo Station Do you know all of those Arctic research stations? Well, how do you think scientists got there? Yep, a lot of them fly there, which means there needs to be a runway to accommodate the airplane. The McMurdo Station in Antarctica is an ice runway built on bare volcanic rock in the Hut Point Peninsula on Ross Island and it's made completely out of ice. But that's not to say there's a cold lake beneath the surface. No, this ice is actually made from four inches of tightly compacted snow. It's a unique way to make perfect use of the natural surroundings. The ice runway at McMurdo Station is used by the United States Antarctic program through the summer season, and it's the only main airport on the entire continent. So if you're flying into Antarctica, there's a pretty good chance that landing here is inescapable. And things get even tougher during the Arctic winters when the area is dark for a full 24 hours a day. The runway doesn't offer the pilots any lights either, so both during the dark days and the serious whiteouts, pilots are going to have to land blind. But don't worry, because they all undergo special training before even attempting to come here. Number 9. Avro 146 at London Airport it may not always seem like it to the passengers, but when a plane lands, it needs to have a soft landing. Otherwise, that 45-ton aircraft is going to go straight into the ground, and you're going to have a lot of unhappy passengers. But unfortunately for the pilot of this aircraft, they came in way too hard while dealing with wind and poor weather conditions, which caused them to bounce along the runway, almost tipping over at one point. But since this is a list of close calls, no one was seriously hurt. And when your flight attendants tell you that bags tend to shift about in the overhead storage compartments, this is what they're talking about. Everyone on board this plane should be thankful for the suspension systems, because in the end, that's mostly what saved everyone on board. When you've had such a smooth trip, the last thing you would want or expect is for things to go wrong on the landing. Talk about cooling your jets. Number 8. Miracle on the Neva Back in 1963, an airplane took off on an ill-fated flight from a Moscow airport. Nicknamed the Squeeze TU-104, the Tupolev TU-104 aircraft needed to make an emergency landing in the Neva River in what is now the city of St. Petersburg. So what happened exactly? Well, almost immediately after takeoff, the airplane encountered severe technical issues and the landing gear was stuck at the halfway point and unable to fully retract. The pilots requested they turn back into their original airport in Moscow, but permission was denied due to heavy fog in the area. Quickly running out of options, the pilots had to make the split-second decision. They would carry on and attempt to land on the unpaved road of a nearby airport. But the technical issues on board only escalated, and the gauges stopped working. Needing to reduce the weight of the plane, the crew dumped most of the fuel, meaning the amount of time they could now spend in the air was limited and true fear was starting to set in. When the engines finally died, the pilots made their way to the Neva River with a rough but successful landing. With the help of tugboats, the aircraft made it back to shore and everyone on board walked away unscathed. The incident became known as the Miracle on the Neva. Number 7. Tocantin Airport If you're ever flying to Honduras by way of the Tocantin Airport, you may want to have a few drinks and a big sleeping pill before the plane starts to land. That's because the Tocantin Airport is sitting right next to the mountains and has an incredibly narrow runway guaranteed to freak out any passenger. And probably even some pilots, too. And it's incredibly complicated to land an airplane here. One false move and things may not turn out so well for the folks on board. On their way to the landing strip, pilots must make an incredibly sharp turn into the valley before landing, and it's said that the whole experience isn't all that different from landing on an aircraft carrier. And that's not something that most pilots will ever have to do. The Decontent Airport is nice and high up there, making for some serious gusts of wind and poor weather conditions most of the time, only adding to the frustration of the pilots going in for a safe landing. 
and if for some reason the plane does overshoot the landing, well, then everyone is headed straight into the face of a mountain. Number 6. Landing Gear Failure If you hate flying, then there's no better feeling when you hear the landing gear go down in preparation for a smooth landing. But everyone got a little more than they bargained for when this plane's landing gear came out the wrong way. You can see that all is well with the rear wheels, but the front landing gear is completely sideways. That's definitely not going to work, but it's also not the type of thing you can fix in mid-air, so the pilot was left with no other choice but to go for it, attempting to land the plane as best they could. The incident may have been absolutely horrifying for everyone inside, but the landing was a success, albeit a messy one. The plane landed amidst smoke and eventually sparks and flames as it dragged its nose across the runway, hanging on by just a thread. And while the landing itself may be pretty amazing, you also have to consider the fact that the entire front landing gear wasn't ripped to shreds, because if the entire structure had gone, there's a good chance that we'd be looking at a totally different scene, with the nose being dragged across the tarmac. Number 5. Gisborne Airport On the outskirts of Gisborne in New Zealand is probably one of the most interesting airports in the world. It's not located near a heavily populated beach or tucked in the crevices of a mountain. Instead, the Gisborne Airport shares a runway with a railway. Planes, trains, and automobiles aren't speeding down the runway side by side. No way. Here, the runway actually intersects with the National Railway Line. Gisborne isn't an incredibly popular airport, making chance of an awful collision quite slim, but the possibility is still there if just one person behind the scenes makes a mistake. Gisborne Airport, though, has to be in a constant contact with the folks working with the railway stations, and the takeoffs and landings are coordinated with accurate and up-to-date train schedules to avoid any twisted metal mishaps. And so while the operations of both the railway and the runway may be dangerous, it does make for a pretty cool and one-of-a-kind setup. Just make sure you're paying close attention. Number 4. Paro Airport Bhutan is a country in Southeast Asia, found near the Himalayas and boasts one scary airport. It's so tough to land at the Paro Airport, in fact, that there's only 17 pilots in the world that are qualified to do it. Yeah, this means it's going to be tough getting there. That's because this 6,500-foot runway is surrounded by 18,000-foot-tall mountain peaks, where one false move means one big boom. And because the location is so precarious, departures and arrivals can only happen during the daytime. The airport's also pretty well hidden by the surrounding mountains, and by the time the pilots do actually see it with their own eyes, they're just moments away from being too late. And to even make it to the runway in one piece, the pilots need to fly between the mountain peak at a 45-degree angle before making their dramatic landing. And even the best pilots still have to fly dangerously close to the homes that dot the mountaintops. This may be one flight where it's not crazy to clap when you've landed safely. Number 3. Kangahas Airport Every pilot worth their salt can talk to you about the Kangahas Airport in Sao Paulo, Brazil. But that doesn't mean that they like flying into it, unless they're a real thrill-seeker or just plain nuts. The Kangahas Airport has a dangerously short runway, and the approach you have to make to get the passengers and crew safely on the ground is even more so. First off, the airport's right in the middle of a heavily built-up part of Sao Paulo, and will give the pilots the feeling that the belly of the plane is about to scrape one of the skyscrapers below while you're coming in for a landing. Once you make it past the high-rises, you get to deal with the tarmac below, which is said to be incredibly slippery. One false move here and things will go south pretty fast. In fact, the landing strip has been a serious issue in the past, with more than one fatal crash occurring there. So whether you're a pilot or a passenger, it might be best to fly into a different airport when cruising over to Brazil. Number 2. Bukla Airport, Nepal if you're the adventurous type, looking to push things to the vertical limit, then there's no doubt that you'll be flying into Lukla Airport in Nepal to scale the treacherous Mount Everest. But despite being an everyday occurrence, landing a plane here is not an easy thing to do. First off, the runway's positioned right between the mountains, and it's very short to boot. You have to hit it perfectly and at just the right speed. There really is no margin for error here at Lukla. And because the airport's up in the mountains, no plane is going to make a descent at the end of the flight. On the contrary, they're going to have to ascend if they want to stick that landing at Lukla. 
The pilots of aircraft need to be in constant communication with air traffic control here, but their power does have a tendency to go out up in the mountains due to the elevation, weather, and generally freezing temperatures that don't play well with electronic equipment. So if this is your first professional outing as a commercial pilot, maybe it's best to work your way up to a landing at Lukla Airport if you're planning on having a long career. Number 1. St. Helena Airport Anyone coming in for a landing at St. Helena Airport on a remote island in the Atlantic Ocean had better hold on tight because they're in for one bumpy ride. There's a lot going on here that even the most seasoned of pilots need to be wary of. But the wind shear paired with the fact that this international airport sits on a cliffside seems to be the biggest points of interest here. Despite being referred to as the most remote airport in the world and even the most useless, the British government spent the equivalent of $370 million on the St. Helena Airport before it opened in 2017, after plenty of delays. It makes only a handful of flights each month, mostly to South Africa, but it's safe to say that no one likes coming through here. It's just too risky. The airport has been built on the prosperous Bay Plain on the east side of the island and has a concrete runway of about 6,300 feet, and the entire facility can accommodate up to two twin-engine passenger aircraft up to the size of a Boeing 757. And because the airport's precarious location, there are plenty of navigation aids to help planes get on and off the ground as safely as humanly possible. There is plenty of rough terrain to be wary of too, as well as steep approaches at a thousand feet above sea level and rocky outcrops which make an instrument-free approach impossible. The St. Helena Airport's equipped with an instrument landing system and a Doppler VHF omnidirectional system, and even Honeywell Aerospace supplied a smart path ground-based augmentation system to aid with GPS signals that make for a precise approach and landing. This is the type of place where there truly is no room for human error, and relying on these high-tech machines is any pilot's best bet. So then, why does such a dangerous airport even exist? Well, despite the remote location, people still live in St. Helena, and prior to the construction of the international airport, the only way on or off the island was by boat. And seeing as how the nearest major landmass is 1,200 miles away, it made for one long journey to the mainland five days by boat to be exact, and to make matters worse, departures were made just once every three weeks. Talks to open an airport on the high and mountainous island began as far back as the 1940s, but it wasn't until 2005 that the bidding process began. We'll see you next time. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.